አዎ ሽሎም ራስ ሳሪ ሰናምትና ጤና ይስጥልኝ እኔ ራስ የዲኖስ ተሳሪ ነኝ አይ አም ወንድም ያለም ብራዘ ያለም of the rastafari brotherhood in ethiopian hebrew commonwealth and this is the beginning 2011 and 2011 of suka suka which is also known as the feast of tabernacles or booths or in gathering it, it's a very important um biblical holy day and especially for us as beta is arayel is a very important day now in the hebrew um sukot is the plural of suka now suka means booths is often interpreted and translated to mean booths or in the context of the scriptures um tabernacles and in the bible king james version of the bible it says that this is the time of in gathering now um the best a reference for this is in leviticus chapter 23 Leviticus chapter 23 but to get a little bit of the biblical background and we have gone in a teaching an associated and related teaching of this but once again at this present time it's the morning is is um, what they call Wednesday morning and this is Wednesday the 12th and this is the the beginning of this uh seven day this seven you could say seven to eight day but this particular part of it is seven days and the esoteric meaning which is the outer the outer basic meaning we we'll could say is the physical meaning not the metaphysical meaning is what we would like to remind our brothers and sisters about and to address in this particular message that we hope would be um able to be posted up in fairly soon time so after we record this we'll seek to post this up but we've been having um certain irregularities in our internet um posting and some of the videos we've just been given the opportunity you know to get them ready and to wait for a good and a strong signal so forth and so on. we're not saying that this is particularly conspiratorial um we don't think it's particularly conspiratorial however we do recognize that there's a lot of things going on within heaven as well as within earth and among the children of of men among human beings and human like beings now sukot what's interesting about sukot is we still have a message right here behind us and this particular message is on prayer this is the message that we've been teaching on prayer so actually this is following the earlier recordings that have yet to be posted on prayer now the the connective matter between this and prayer is that these holy days and holy times are times of divine mind or times of of prayer but the whole question of what is prayer in our opinion as well as hopefully in yours if you take this issue to heart and look at it honestly is is still unknown in other words when we speak about prayer what is prayer is prayer just speaking to god does prayer happen at certain specific times and are these times aligned with heaven and earth and with the divine or is this prayer whatever we make it out to be and unfortunately that is it and there's a like we said there's a lot of um connective issues with the matter of prayer but as a basic overview let us assume and and this is a general assumption for our specific but more over for the general audience let's assume that we do understand what prayer is and prayer in truth is a two-way communication with god and we understand that god in spirit and in truth is the spirit of life and the, the spirit of truth and that god is a spirit as our black lord and savior the messiah yahushua otherwise known as Jesus Christ or in the Ethiopic Jesus Christos what he has taught us he said that he said that um um those who pray to God in the future time and dispensation must must pray to him in spirit and in truth and it would not be localized as it was in that first century time and even before that time it was localized at a certain or specific particular um spot or location 
Now, all this is very important as we get into the Ethiopic hieroglyphs. In other words, as we start to decipher the Ethiopic um, name and word hieroglyphically, looking at the, the, the symbolic logic and the parabolic and the mysteries of this particular matter, because when we study it from that particular point of view, and, and we've had a, a recent opportunity um, to do so, we was enlightened to that and started to really look into the word zelot, zelot, which is prayer. But in seeing what the present time is right now with Sukkot, we thought we would present a more a more uh, abbreviated or a more brief message on Sukkot because when we see what's going on in the mundane and in the world, right now there's something called a Wall Street, um, Occupy Wall Street and the Wall Street protests and these and these protests are going on all over um, the country and in other countries there's also protests but just pointing to what occurred and has begun on um, Wall Street about roughly maybe a month, three to almost four or so weeks ago, it began on Wall Street, where one started to basically occupy Wall Street to let the powers that be know of the injustices and corruptions and, and to seek some a remedy or change. Now, many say that, well, the Wall Street protesters are not all aligned in their mind and in what they want, and there's many different views, and the media has been um, slinging the proverbial media hash at at the Wall Street protests. Now they're trying to come around a little bit, but still there's that there's that general um, disbelief and the lack of acceptance by those who more or less are in bed with um, the rich people of the world or with the 1%, the so-called 1% that's at the top, and there's a 99 who's who's at the bottom, and this 1% controls, they say, over 40 to 50, some say more, percentage of the wealth. But here's what's interesting, my brothers and sisters, seeing that this is Sukkot, and this is basically a Sukkot message, but we want to seek to tie in the, the, the Sukkahs and therefore the Sukkot collectively that are down there in Wall Street. Basically, the people have camped in in, in some um, um, Zuadi or some 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 park down there in the Wall Street private so-called park down in the Wall Street area. Um, recently, the mayor of this particular state and locality, um, New York, New York, the center of the the um, mythological Babylon, this is the mythological Babylon, the belly of the mythological Babylon, that what we have is a Sukkot, is the ancient Sukkot or the biblical scriptural Sukkot, which means tabernacle and booths, where they live in booths for a period of seven days. Now, of course, the people down at Wall Street have been living in booths, at least down in that area, camped out, so forth and so on. It's just like a mini city. But this is a powerful sign, and we would do injustice if we did not, first of all, um, once recognizing it, did not seek to communicate this to our brothers and sisters. In other words, when you observe what's going on on the Occupy Wall Street, is the Occupy Wall Street a modern Sukkot? Is it a, ma a modern form of the, the, the living in booths or, or, or tabernacling? for a period of days or during a particular season. Now, the same season, speaking about October, if we go back to 2008 when um, the elections was going on and it was more than clear that Barack um, Obama would be the next president, there was the Wall Street surprise. And the Wall Street surprise was the, the near, they say, collapse of the American and therefore also the global economic system. They say that this, this so-called crash or this economic crisis that occurred or that was, was broadcasted and, and was announced, what happened is that it was announced. They could no longer keep it a secret. 
So this came out, and this was known as the October Surprise. So here we are now. We have moved into the month of October, and here we are right now at the Hebrew Beit Israel. Um, both the black Hebrews and Israelites and other Jews, um, religious Jews, and, uh, European Jews, as well especially them in this present dispensation, are gathering for what they know and call as Sukkot, which is our ancient feast of booths our ancient feast of tabernacle. So there's, there's a very interesting within the, the world, the, the so-called seclurum, as well as on the spiritual, metaphysical, and the Hebraic level with what's going on down there in that Wall Street area and the Occupy Wall Street. So this is the point that we wanted to, to, to make around this present time, that seeing that Sukkot is... is um, the Feast of Tabernacles or Living in Boots, Living in Boots. The, 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 the significance is this. This is what's interesting. The significance is that it's one of the three pilgrim um, festivals or the Shalosh Regalim, the three pilgrim festivals. Now, this particular Occupy Wall Street, people have been gathering and people have been journeying, almost like a pilgrimage, to the Wall Street area and to see what's going on, to, to some to lend support, some to probably show disagreement or so forth and so on, but many to, it's like a pilgrimage to this Wall Street area. Now, do you know or do you understand that Wall Street got its very start from the slave trade and from the buying and the selling of our people of the once lost but now found Beta Israel, or the so-called black Hebrews and the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the so-called um, black slaves or African slaves, more correctly, the Ethiopian Hebrew slaves. Now, this really is the at the beginning of our Holocaust. So if we would begin to investigate, study, and, and, and meditate the evidence a little bit deeper and, and to follow the truth, the true spirit of the matter, we see that the economic crisis and the enslavement of black people is very much connected, is very much connected, just like that serpent on the cross or, or just like the dollar sign, which is similar to a snake on a pole. When you look at the the dollar sign, is is a snake on a pole, and then there's a um there's an interesting book that I think has a similar title to that, um something about the serpent on the cross. I think it's speaking about black people, the the economics, the enslavement, and it was on Wall Street, right? Exactly the street that's called Wall Street. There was a wall, there was a wall at one time, and it was on this wall that our ancestors as a particular people in the Americas and the Caribbean over the past 400 plus years. It was our ancestors who were sold into slavery. And this, like we say, is the beginning of our, if not a holocaust, it was a holocaust. And it was such a course that the debt for this, which has gone global, the, the debt for the slave trade was localized in its beginning to America and to those who were directly responsible. But now, as this economic system was created on the foundation of the suffering of our ancestors, this is where it has gone global, and it has global consequences and global ramifications. And this is why we continue to, to preach and to teach and to minister and lecture on this particular message and making the connections, just like now. Now is Sukkot, and, and Sukkot is observed by we as black Hebrews and Jews, by Israelites, by Messianic Jews, and by even certain, certain Christians who, who, who know the truth also recognize the importance of, of uh, Sukkot in connection with the ingathering, even if they look at it more from an eschatological perspective, you know, even if they look at it from a more spiritual 
perspective in the sense of the end times when the church is gathered to our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But they have sought to stop the rise of the Messiah. And they've recognized that the Messiah, the true Messiah, would come from among this once lost but now found Beta Israel. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in principle in these end times, but with um, cosmically um, better results for the sufferer and, and for the oppressor. Now, this is a very special prayer that I think needs to be said around this uh, Sukkot time, seeing that we are in this particular time of Sukkot and Sukkot 2011. The date for Sukkot 2011 is the 12th of October to the 19th of October. Now, the observances for Sukkot is eating in a sukkah. A sukkah, for lack of a better explanation besides booths, a sukkah is, is a hut. We call it gojo, or some call it a tikkul in Ethiopia and Ethiopia. It's a hut. So when you see the Africans in these huts and in these uh, tikkuls or gojos, in the Hebrew sense, that is what we call a sukkah. So it is interesting to make that connection, both that African connection, that Ethiopian connection, that black people connection, as well as the modern connection of the Sukkot, the Sukkot on Wall Street. Occupy Wall Street is a modern the Sukkot in the very spot where the biblical Israelites, where the true Israelites, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to verse 68. So you really need to understand that. And once again, we're going to reference these books, these two books here. One is um, from Babylon to Timbuktu, from Babylon to Timbuktu, and this here is a history of the ancient black races, including the black Hebrews. It shows how our people have been all over the world. I'm talking about ancestrally speaking of this particular people who were enslaved and who were um, in shackles and in chains and stocks and bonds. That's where stocks and bonds actually comes from, that whole idea of stocks and bonds. So it's very spiritually ironic that we have a form of Sukkot occurring on Wall Street where the protesters and others who are terribly dissatisfied you understand, about the economic um, course, you understand, or the, the downturn in economics and the fact that um, there is the rich people or a certain small percentage is controlling all of the wealth, you understand, almost just about all of the wealth. Now, the second book is this book here. This is called The Valley of the Dry Bones, The Conditions That Face Black People in America. And it's important that all people understand the significance of this because what we're witnessing now and what we are likely to witness even after now and coming, coming next, coming soon, coming very soon, is other global curses for the injustices that were done here and for the ignorance to this. See, there's ignorance on one part of the so-called black folks. Black people like to be ignorant and like to avoid this. They'll say, forget about slavery. Slavery was in the past, so forth and so on. Yet we will celebrate events, even in American history, which are that old or even older than that. And we'll just skim over and gloss over that. We should not. As the other Jews say, we must begin to say, never again. We, we should never again. You understand? Ignore this because it's not just a consequence for us as a people, as we can see in the ghettos and in the situations and in the conditions of, of black America, of the black woman, of, of the single parent households, of the deadbeat fathers, of the, of the children, the lost children. I mean, this is, this is our story, my brothers and sisters. So Sukkot, even as in the present time for most of us, must be a memorial time because we are not properly educated and properly prepared ourselves as other so-called Jews are 
to, to do this, to put this into effect, we still must learn who we are. But this aspect is still a very important aspect for those of us who are becoming discipled and those of us who are studying and those of us who are putting into practice, putting in spirit and in truth what we are learning, you understand, and have become persuaded of making our wills obedient to good influences and avoiding evil, as His Majesty says, is to show the greatest wisdom. So this book here is a, is a very crucial book, both in the prophetic significance as well as in the real world, because some would say that a lot of us, we focus a lot on the Bible and scriptures, so forth and so on, but there's a very present and evident connection to the real world, and one sign, in a sense, though it's not a sign in the big sense, but it's still a, it's a, it's an important sign. It may be a, a significant sign, and the sign is the sign of the Occupy Wall Street, and Occupy Wall Street, and the Martin Sukkot, the Hebrew the Hebrew Sukkot or tabernacle rooms, in gatherings, living in booths. And this was to commemorate how how the Almighty had brought the Old Testament Israelites, the black Hebrews and black Jews, out of Egypt, as well as bring the true church in a Christian sense and in a spiritual sense out of spiritual Egypt. And for us, it's a sign of coming out of Babylon, of coming out of Babylon. But first, we must come out of this spiritual, you know what I'm saying? We must decipher and unravel the, the, the spiritual matrix, you know what I'm saying? The spiritual matrix. And it begins with us learning the half of our story that hasn't been told concerning us. So, uh, brothers and sisters, this is the beginning of, of Sukkot which is a very important um, um, observance called booth and tabernacle. It's one of the important um, three pilgrim uh, festivals or the Shalosh Regali. And this year, 2011, it occurs from the 12th of October to the 19th of October. Now, the observances, as we've touched on elsewhere, we'll go over again here, is basically eating, living and eating, in a sukkah, eating and living in a booth. This is one of the reasons why we connect the Wall Street protests occurring at this very time and still ongoing, you understand, and even been given a certain permissive willingness by the mayor, um, Michael Bloomberg, of this particular city, New York, where Wall Street is located. So now we have to do the math and, and see the comparisons and see the connections and look at the evidence of this. Now, it's also taking of other Jews add a significance to the taking of the four species, the four species of, of, of plant life and the, um, you know, the synagogue observances as well to this. But when we look at this, the Hebrew word is sukkah. Sukkah is singular. Sukkot is plural. Sukkot means booth or tabernacle. And this is a wall structure that's covered with shalach. Shalach is the type of plant material, such as tree branches or bamboo shoots. Now, the sukkah is intended to, to remind and be a reminiscence you understand, a reminiscence of a type of a, a fragile dwelling. So there's a very spiritual idea here in the observance of Sukkot. Because even if we are living in mansions and big houses, but if we are observant as Hebrews and as Jews, and especially us as black Jews, we'll recognize that this is to, to spiritually humble us and to let us recall where we have been, Yobosan, and where the Almighty, the Spirit of Truth, where the true God has delivered us, the God of righteousness, of truth and justice. Now, what's interesting is that the, the Occupy Wall Street has this same inclination. There's an inclination from the, the protests and what's going on to do good. There may not be all the knowledge, there may not be all the agreement, so forth and so on, but in its general inclination, it is 
it is again some similar to the 60s what we're seeing here is even a reminiscence of the 60s so seeing how all these points are interconnected but at the very root of it is Wall Street because Wall Street got to be Wall Street because of the stocks and because of the bonds of our people of the lost sheep of the house of Israel the so-called black folks who don't know themselves majority wise in this day and time and this 40-year period is a 40-year period that's also associated with um, Sukkot and the Sukkahs from the Bible, the Old Testament, but then we can see among black people too. All of us who, who know are asking, well, this is 40 years later when we consider the civil rights movement so forth and so on. So there's this 40-year um, sojourn, there's this 40-year traveling through the wilderness. And for us, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad of the Nation of Islam was right and exact. He pointed out that America is the wilderness of North America. And now for 40 years, we have journeyed as a people. You understand? As a nation, a lost sheep, but still as a lost sheep in the, uh, the eyes of the Almighty, we have journeyed for this 40 years in the wilderness of North America, in this wilderness of civil rights. And many are beginning to seriously ask, how have we really benefited? It's just like the Israelites. The Israelites, a whole generation had wandered around that same old mountain. And we too, as a people, have wandered around that same old mountain. And now, that was after the exodus. We've gone through a, a sort of an exodus from, from the hand of slave Massa. You understand? That's the whole emancipation, the proclamation, if you will. You understand? The Juneteenth and all the other um, related um, exoduses of black people, whether from the south to the north, whether from the east to the west, or from here to there, you understand? There was this exodus from the direct hand of slavery. So when they say slavery, they're talking about in its direct sense, it ended in this here spiritual Egypt. Now, let us look a little bit more at this important subject matter. Stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. And once again, a uh, happy Sukkot to you all. And we pray that those people and brothers and sisters and others down there in the Wall Street protests and elsewhere be guided, you know what I'm saying, be guided by, by truth and righteousness so that they can also fulfill the will of our God, Father, the King of Kings, and his Christ, the black Messiah, whom the same corporation, the same Leviathan, has sought to stop the rise of the black Messiah. So they are antichrists who have sought to stop the rise of the black Messiah. Understand the truth, understand the reality. They say the truth is stranger than fiction. And when you put this all together, there is a multiple, a multiple, um, um, verification. There's multiple verification points of this particular truth. But brothers and sisters, stay tuned. More to come. Yahweh and Shalom. Rastafari. Ene Rasiadinos Tafari Name. I am Wendem Yahadam.